All right, so now the latest on the coronavirus. And a British drug maker has reportedly begun testing an antibody-based cocktail that would protect against COVID-19 for six months. Sounds pretty promising, but we don't know. Let us bring in Dr. Diane Hess to talk more about this and some of the other headlines as it relates to the coronavirus. So let's start with this really interesting idea of an antibody cocktail protect against the virus for six months. What do you know? How promising is it? Well, I think since the onset of this pandemic, many companies have been working on antibodies to treat COVID. And I, I think it will come much sooner than a vaccine because it's, it, it's a drug and not a vaccine and the testing is not as lengthy. But you have to remember that this trial just started with 48 people. So it's only a phase one trial. Then you have to do a phase two and a phase three. So it is it is very exciting, but um, it's, a, it's a new study. I think in the U.S., Sorrento is already working on um, antibody trials for quite a while. Other Other companies have. And Yes, I hope that this will come to fruition because this will be much easier to, to administer and to roll out before a vaccine is improved, approved. So the question, of course, uh, doctor, is how this vaccine, should it prove to be promising, would be administered here in the United States. I know that the Trump administration has been uh, uh, talking about it. They've actually referenced it several times. The question, of course, is uh, given the conflict that we've seen between the administration and, for example, the Federal Drug Administration, the FDA, um, and the CDC, the, how are Americans to know that these vaccines are actually effective and safe? Because you don't know if they are being brought to market because of political pressure or because of the science inherent within them. Well, I think you have to separate the politics from the science. And no drug company is going to bring a vaccine to market before it is ready, because if a vaccine goes south, one, they will lose their company. They will not be in business any longer. And two, the U.S. citizens and citizens around the world will lose faith in vaccines. That's not what scientists do. I don't think any vaccine company you know, is out there to say, I'm going to rush this vaccine to market before it's safe because that's not what we're doing. People are in this field because they want to save lives. And, you know, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, all of these companies, Moderna, they are doing their best, but I don't think anybody's going to rush it, no matter how many, you know, people say they're going to rush it because of the election. I do not think a vaccine is going to come out before the election. And I think it'll come out probably after January. And no scientist, you know, who's, you know, dedicated their lives to virology is going to release a vaccine that could cause harm. I just think that would be totally counterintuitive because it would make people have lose faith in the health, you know, in the health policy of, of the United States. Dr. Hess, I think, you know, part of what Vlad is addressing is mm -hmm. the uh, news that we got about from the FDA um, about uh, the authorization of convalescent plasma, right? And so there was a press conference on Sunday. And then, essentially, uh, Dr. Stephen Hahn came out and um, kind of, like, qualified the enthusiasm for this treatment and it became a little confusing so he was actually on cbs this morning and he addressed this issue i want to play mm -hmm. some of that sound and then i want to talk sure. to you a little bit more the other thing that's raising a couple of eyebrows is that at that at that announcement the president and yourself announced that it was reducing deaths by 35 percent top scientists today are wondering where you got that info where you got that data from how does that square yeah yeah, thanks for the opportunity. And um, we're putting out uh, additional information to support um, uh, the emergency use authorization. So w the way this works is that we looked at um, the Mayo Clinic data. Um, and the Mayo Clinic identified a group of patients, certain patients that it looked like this benefited the most, that the antibodies benefited them the most. We asked for additional validation data that came in, which supported that, meaning that comparing those patients who got high concentrations of antibody versus though the those that got low concentrations of antibodies. When you look at those data, the survival benefit between those two groups was a relative benefit of 35%. And as I mentioned, I could have done a better job of explaining that at the press conference yesterday. 
So, doctor, as I understand it, you know, part of the issue with this plasma treatment is some of the patients that did recover may have actually received other treatments too. You know, typically if you're suffering yes. from COVID, mm -hmm. they're going to throw everything they can at you. It wasn't sort of a an exp it wasn't sort of a, sort of a formal attempt to determine whether or not the plasma treatment was was um, valid because they weren't sort of placebo uh, exactly. placebo situation or anything like that. Um, and but uh, what I kept on thinking is that, you know, this is the sort of stuff that makes people really nervous about the science. They don't know if they can trust the science. So I just want, I want to get your take on this whole situation and, you know, the dangers of putting out information and then qualifying it. I'm not going to call it backtracking, but mm -hmm. to, to a lay person, it looks like backtracking. Um, well, I thought his explanation was quite good. I mean, you have to remember that mm. doctors are not all, um, they don't all have sound bites. You know, you go to school mm -hmm. and then you're, you know, but you take this role in public policy and you all of a sudden have to be a great uh, order. And sometimes you know the answer in your head and it doesn't come out properly. And now he explains himself. Um, the truth is there is no placebo, right? So we're trying to save lives. So these patients might have gotten remdesivir, they might have gotten hydroxychloroquine, they might have gotten and any other number of drugs at the time because we started using it early on. Um, but I think ultimately it, it does not cause harm and it has caused some improvement and some studies show as maybe as little as 10% improvement in, or 10% decrease in fatality, which if that was my family member, I'd want them to get the, you know, the convalescent plasma. I think there are great loopholes. I mean, I, I know so many people who have signed up to donate plasma who have been un, not been called because I think the system is overwhelmed. So they say that the government has like put out ads to encourage people to donate uh, plasma who have recovered from COVID, but yet I know plenty of people because we were in New York City early on when it hit, and I have tons of friends and colleagues who have not been called to donate plasma. So we just need more rigorous studies. You know, it's an election time and, and people want to get their kids back into school and they want to work and open the economy. So we're hanging on every word. I guarantee you if this wasn't a pandemic and this was about another virus, nobody would really care because they don't hang on every word that somebody says. But right now, everything is being criticized and overanalyzed, and maybe people are speaking in haste. But I think we also have to take a step back and say that we do want you know, the economy to re reopen. We do want kids back in school, and we're trying our best. And I think nobody is malintended. It is just, um, there is just pressure. I think there's just yeah, this rid it, ridiculous it, amount a, of pressure. It, 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 you make a good point, doctor, and that is absolutely true. People want to get back to work. People want to get back to school. I've been broadcasting, Emory and I have been broadcasting from our homes for over 100 days. Uh, I'm ready to be back in the studio. But, but the question becomes, of course, I think the other point that I think is what's confusing for the general population is when the federal government attempts to use language that makes people believe that a treatment that has been used for over 100 years, and everybody understands that convalescent plasma has been used in treatment um, mm -hmm. for, for many, many dozens of years, but that they try to say that this is a silver bullet. This is what we've been waiting for. Now you can go back to, you know, forget social distancing, forget mm -hmm. masks, forget, you know, um, the measures that we put into place because we've got this convalescent plasma problem solved. I think that's the message that sometimes gets lost when you have political leaders um, and doctors trying to deliver a message around a medication. You think this is the silver bullet. This is going to be the thing that uh, makes us uh, revert back to the way things were pre-Rona. And, and I think that that's what we're confused about. Yes, and also like people don't realize that this is an IV treatment. This is only for hospitalized patients. So you don't want to get to that state where you have to get convalescent plasma. We need treatments like the monoclonal antibody study that's coming out. Um, so yes, we're people feel pressured. Doctors feel pressured. I can't tell you how many, um, I'm on every Facebook doctor's group regarding COVID. And people say, I have a patient who needs remdesivir and we have none in our hospital. I have a patient who needs, patient who needs uh, co you know, plasma. Where can I transfer them to? Who has an ambulance? Like how, who's going to pay for this? I mean, people are desperate to save their patients. Doctors are trying really hard to save patients who should not be dying from coronavirus. They're young and then they're in their peak of their life and they're getting taken out. So I think there is this pressure because 
you want to, to save your patient and you want to do the best for them. And then all of a sudden you have the politics coming in. And th this is like a first time in the world that this is like colliding. And now people are using politics and election and who's going to win. Uh, because if there's a vaccine before the election, maybe Trump can win. And if not, then Trump will lose. I mean, this is just ridiculous. We have to focus on the science. I totally agree about that. Dr. Diane Hess, always great mm -hmm. to have you for the fact mm -hmm. that you actually do provide uh, that scientific clarity that is sorely needed in these difficult times. We appreciate it as always. Thank you.